Hey everybody, Michael with the Sky's Limit Aviation Channel here. One of the most frequently asked questions that I get is, how do I get my frame rates up into the mid to upper 40s? I'm going to answer those questions today, so grab your pen and a piece of paper and get ready to jot down some notes. Let's get this video started. Before we get started tweaking our FSX settings, you're going to go and download an application called NVIDIA Inspector. Those are going to make the changes that you need in FSX to go ahead and get those frame rates a little bit higher. So I have a link on the description of the video that goes to my Mediafire account. And once you've downloaded that file, just go to your downloads folder. It's called FSX Tweaking. Go ahead and unzip the folder and open it. And here's NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Also included are some JPEG images that have the settings that you're going to put in Profile Inspector. And then these, the graphics, aircraft, scenery, weather, and traffic JPEGs, those are going to be made in FSX itself in the settings dialog boxes. In addition to that, we're also going to make some additions to the configuration file for FSX, and that file is right here. So to open up Profile Inspector, you're going to right-click. You want to run as administrator. That'll bring the program up right here. And then open up the file that says FSX Settings. And this is the settings that you're going to use here. Hey everybody, Michael from the future here. Before I get started in a couple seconds showing you which things to actually change in NVIDIA Profile Inspector, one thing that I failed to mention is that while these settings will work in a already installed version of FSX, it's highly recommended that you start out with a fresh brand new install of Flight Simulator 10. It's not going to affect things one way or the other in the way of frame rates, but it's just recommended that you just start with a clean slate and just do it on a fresh install. So this is Michael from the future bringing you back to the present. So to get started, you want to go to this profile box and you want to click and scroll down until you get to Microsoft Flight Simulator 10. Now my settings are already in here, so I'm not going to change anything, but I'm going to show you what those settings are. So go back to the JPEG. The first setting that we're doing is going to be anti-aliasing. So that's going to be section three of the profile. And the first thing we're changing is anti-aliasing behavior flags. You want to make sure that is set to none. So just click it. There's a pop-up box. Make sure it's set to none. Next one is going to be anti-aliasing mode. And the setting is going to be override any application setting. Next step is going to be anti-aliasing setting. And you want it to 8xs combined 1 by 2 ss plus 4x ms. So make sure you have that setting in there. That does it for the first section. I'm going to scroll down to texture filtering, anisotropic filtering mode to be set to user-defined slash off. Anisotropic filtering setting is going to be set to 16x. Texture filtering, negative LOD bias, you want to set for clamp. Texture filtering quality, you want set for high quality. The last section that you're going to go to is the common section, section 5, and there's only one setting that we're going to play with here, and that's going to be power management mode, and you want prefer maximum performance. Over here in the JPEG, there's a section for vertical sync that's no longer supported in this version of NVIDIA Profile Inspector, so you don't need to do anything with it. Once you've made these changes, click Apply Changes, and then just simply close out the program and you're done. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to open up your FSX configuration file, and that's going to be in your PC, normally under Windows, and you're going to go to Users, and you're going to go to your main profile folder, 
you're going to go to app data roaming microsoft fsx and then you want this file here this is your configuration file you'll have to go into your folder view to make this folder visible and you can look up online how to do that i just created a desktop shortcut to my fsx configuration and that's all that needs to and and that just allows me to be able to edit it easily so the next file that we're going to need is going to be this file, the FSX Configuration Editions, and go ahead and open that up. And in your configuration file, there are different sections. You have main, terrain, some of these don't exist at all, display, and graphics. You're going to go ahead and copy each of these items and then paste it in the appropriate section of the configuration file. So the first one is going to go into your main section. And basically what you do is open up your configuration file. And when you, if you want to find your main section, just click Edit, Find, Main. It'll take you right down to that section, and that's how you... That's how you find where you need to put these items. So going back to our Word file. So in the main section, you're going to copy fiber frame time fraction equals 0 0.15. Copy that. Paste it into the main section under the last entry. The next one is going to be terrain. And it's going to be LOD radius equals 6.5 with five zeros has to be exactly like that. Do not put just 6.5, copy this whole thing verbatim. Buffer pools is a section that does not exist in the FSX file, but what you're gonna go ahead and do is just copy that whole entire thing, go to the very bottom of the configuration file, and just paste it at the very bottom under whatever the last entry is. Next one is going to be display. Texture bandwidth multi equals 120. You want to just go ahead and again, copy that line verbatim, place it under the last entry under the display heading. And finally, we have graphics, and you want high mem fix equals one, and you want to go ahead and copy that and paste that into the graphics section under the last entry. This just happens to be a setting that was left out of the configuration files when Service Pack 2 was created, but go ahead and add that in there. Once you have all these entries in there, make sure that you save your, save your configuration file. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Flight Simulator itself. We're gonna use each of these five JPEGs to set the settings within FSS itself. So we're going to go ahead and open up Flight Simulator. And I've turned off the audio so you don't have to listen to the music throughout this tutorial. Okay, what we're going to do once you get the main screen up is we're going to click on Settings. And we're going to go to Customize. And here we are at the first section, which is going to be our graphics section. Now, a couple things that you want to turn off right away is lens flare and light bloom. If you have Service Pack 2, it has a preview of DirectX 10. Leave that unchecked. Global texture resolution you want set to very high. Filtering you want on trilinear, and you want to uncheck anti-aliasing. Target frame rate is usually just set at 30, but in reality, you can just set it to whatever you want to. It really does not make a difference. Next tab is going to be aircraft. My default cockpit view is the 2D instrument panel, and I shut off the cockpit tooltips. And when I do have a 3D virtual cockpit, I just click on high resolution. 2D panel transparency is set to zero. Over here on the exterior settings, the only thing that you want to uncheck is aircraft cast shadows on itself. 
but go ahead and keep shadows on the ground and landing lights illuminate on the ground checked. For scenery, on the left hand side for terrain and water, level of detail radius you want large, mesh complexity is going to be 75, mesh resolution is going to be 38 meters, texture resolution is going to be 1 meter, and water effects are going to be mid 2x. And go ahead and keep land detail textures checked. On the right hand side under scenery objects, you want scenery complexity very dense, auto gen density very dense, special effect details will be set to medium, and uncheck ground scenery shadows. Next tab is going to be weather. Not much that you need to change in here. Cloud draw distance you want to keep at 60 nautical miles. Thermal visualizations are none. You do want detailed clouds, and I have mine set at maximum, but if you're flying through really dense clouds and you see some frame rate hits, feel free to dial down a little bit until you get those frame rates back. Rate at which weather changes over time I have set to high, but if you're running a weather engine like FS Real Weather WX 3.0 like I do, this is not going to really make a difference. Traffic settings. Traffic is going to be your biggest frame rate killer. So if you've got a really good AI traffic set up in your flight simulator, the best thing you can do for traffic density is probably set it to 25 to 45%. Just play with it and see how good your frames are. General aviation traffic density, probably keep it at about 10 to 15%. Airport vehicle density, if your graphics card can handle it, set it to high. For land and sea traffic, these are just my personal settings because I like to see road vehicles, ships and ferries, and leisure boats. So 45% on road vehicles, 40% on ships and ferries, 40% on leisure. Aircraft labels, I never show the aircraft labels because number one, it's stupid and it just eats into your frame rates. And then just simply hit OK, and then go to free flight, set up your flight simulator however you want to, fly now, and you're good to go. And that's going to do it for this video on tweaking FSX. If you learned something, please make a comment, hit that like button, please support the channel by subscribing. That'll do it for today. This is Michael with the Sky's Limit Aviation Channel wishing you a good and wonderful weekend. And we'll see you in the next video or live stream. Have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye now.